Today's video is on laboratory investigation of poisoning. So, poison, the definition. So, a poison is any substance that irritates, damages, or impairs the activity of the body's tissues. So, here's a famous quote from Paracelius 1496 to 1541 All things are poison, and nothing is without poison. Only the dose makes a thing not a poison. Interpret that how that interpret how that how you may read that one. So when it comes to medical, you have a different types of poison. You have medication such as paracetamol, salicylate, aspirin, digoxin, insulin. You have chemical poisons such as methanol, ethylene, glycerol, and chlorine, and you have substance abuse involving alcohols, opiates, and cocaine. You also have pollutants such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and lead. Venoms such as melatonin and tetra tetrodoxetin, and chemical biological weapons such as zycin, mustard gas, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So there's different types of classifications of poisons, so you can have intentional and unintentional. Your intentional is suicide, parasuicide, deliberate self-poisoning, substance abuse, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, homicidal, judicious, judicial, and euthanasia, and unintentional is occupational, environmental, Latrogenic and accidental. So, management must be tailored to the patient and the suspected cause, but the first principles are the same airway, breathing, circulation, disability involving the conscious levels, pupils, eye movements, temperatures, muscle tone, as well as the <coughs> word don't, such as dextrose, oxygen, malazone, thiamine, and exposure, such as visible injuries. So here you can see the clinical assessment here of the eye opening movement and verbal. So these are the numbers that refer to it. Four spontaneous sets of based on uh, or based on man's verbal oriented. And then the lowest number is number one, where there's no verbal, no response, and no eye opening. But then you within the movement you've got withdrawal from pain, abnormal flexion to pain, etc. So it's important to get a clinical history. So information from the patient, family, friends, a past medical history, tablets, blister packs, bottles, drug history, occupation, hobbies, recent activities, and whether there was a suicide note present. Further management principles involve seeking advice. So the NPIS, www.hotspace.org, decontamination, reducing absorption, activated charcoal if the OD is less than one hour, and suitable drug, rarely multiple doses, such, such as involved in theophilopine, the increased elimination, dialysis, specific antidotes, NAC, naloxone, formipozole, alcohol, digibind, and psychiatric assessment. Investigation, what you want to do is, is confirm the diagnosis if it's in doubt, to influence patient management, how do investigations, antidotes, dialysis, cessation of treatment, the plan resumption of chronic therapy, diagnosis of brain death, for example, thiopentone, and medical drill and forensic reasons. So here are specific tests that are undertaken. You can see here core tests, specific tests, and further tests. So your core tests are in the laboratory, as I've explained previous before. These are the ones that are usually just taken anyway. Your full blood, full blood count, your ear, glucose, etc., level function tests. But your specific tests involve carboxyhemoglobin, digoxin, ethanol, iron, lithium, methylmethoglobin, paracetamol, salicylate, and theophylline, valproate. Then you've got further tests as well, you can see in the list there. Thyroxine, phallium, phenytoin, etc. So looking at first at paracetamol. So paracetamol is a common over-the-counter painkiller. It is the single most important substance involved in poisoning in the UK. The main cause of fulminant hepatic failure in the UK. The single acute overdose is defined as an injection of greater than 4 grams or greater than 75 milligrams per kilogram in a period of less than one hour. And it's probably more often staggered. So the clinical symptoms are vomiting, less than 12 hours, 12 to 36 hours. Less than 12 hours is due to drug effects, 12 to 36 hours is due to liver damage and necrosis. You get right upper quadrant abdominal pain, so liver damage, swelling and stitching or capsule. You get jaundice within 36 to 72 hours. You get hepatic encephalopathy, greater than 72 hours, cerebral edema, greater than 96 hours, ammonia. It is really acute renal failure and coma. So for paracetamol toxicity, there are three possible routes for paracetamol metabolism. Greater than 90% is metabolized by glucuronidation or sulfation. CYP2E1 metabolism accounts for 
Growth fluoridation in sulfation becomes saturated and CYP2E1 metabolism increased. Alcohol can then induce CYP2E1. Within the laboratory, you would want to measure paracetamol greater than 4 hours after injection. Injection, if known, you need to measure the INR time, which is prothrombin time, liver function tests including GGT, and there should be raised ALT, raised AST greater than 1000 and a peak greater than 96 hours, raised bilirubin, urea electrolytes, and hypoglycemia. So treatment for paracetamol involves N-acetylcysteine, parvolates with cytothiazone precursor. Moving on to salicylate, aspirin. This is a common over-the-counter painkiller. Acute toxicity can occur after ingestion, ingestion of a single dose of aspirin of the equivalent of greater than 150mg per kilogram or greater than 6.5g. So the symptoms include nausea, vomiting, tinnitus, impaired hearing, hyperventilation, which is simulation of the respiratory centre, GI tract irritation, contractions, disturbance of lipid and carbohydrate metabolism, and cerebral and pulmonary edema, which is rare. So, for the body information, you have salicylate, which is greater than 2 hours symptomatic or greater than 4 hours asymptomatic after ingestion. You have arterial blood glass, serum biocarbonate, respiratory alkalosis, hyperventilation, met metabolic acidosis, salicylic acid. You have urea and electrolytes, liver function test, glucose, INR, and FP full blood count also being investigated those most of these are light specific and uh, non-specific tests so for treatment for salicylate within one hour of what injection ingestion you have activated charcoal if its dose is life-threatening greater than 500 milligrams per kilogram a, la a, a drastic lavage is considered sodium bicarbonate which helps protect the nervous system alkalinize urine to in increase elimination and correcting potassium first if poison is severe hemodialysis greater than 900 milligrams per litre, greater than 700 milligrams per litre of metabolic acidosis. So you would have hemodialysis to, if the poison is severe. If they're toxic alcohols, these include ethylene glycols found in antifreeze screen wash, methanol, and ethylene, ethylene, ethylene glycol intoxication is there. Methanol is actually more common. The features of ethylene glycol include Nausea, vomiting, ataxia, dysphoria, drowsiness. It is uncommon to have convulsions, CNS abnormalities, cardiac arrhythmias, cardiac failure, myositis, neonophilia, and cerebral edema. For methanol, same again. Nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, headache, blurred vision, breathlessness, sweat, sweating, restlessness. But it's unlikely to have blindness, convulsion, crystal breathing, pancreatitis, respiratory failure, hypotension, cerebral edema, and basal ganglia infarction. Here's a diagram here showing how toxicity occurs. So you can see here the alcohol dehydrogenase goes to CNS defects, aldehyde dehydrogenase goes to glycolic acid. You know, and you can just follow the diagram here how the toxic alcohol and toxicity work. So, measuring toxic alcohols, you want to do measuring of ethylene glycol. Methanol is not readily available. So, gas chromatography can be used for that. Analysis must be arranged for the laboratory. There must be a history, clinical suspicion, a patient report, urea and electrolytes, biocarbonate, blood gases, serum osmolality, adjusted calcium and glucose. Also the onion gap, which is sodium plus potassium take away chlorine plus bicarbonate. Slightly positive due to unmeasured contribution for a negatively charged protein. If it's high due to unmeasured ions, for example acids. So it's important to exclude other causes such as diabetes, ketoacidosis, and lactate, etc. For osmolal gap, osmolality equals the number of solute molecules per weight water. The calculated osmolality is to 2 bracket the Na plus uh, potassium plus urea plus glucose. Osmolal gap is, is equal to measured osmolality to a calculated osmolality. If it's high, a greater than 10 to 15. Millions molar per kilogram, we can exclude ethanol. So, as I mentioned before in the previous slide, important to exclude other causes. So, features of this include high onion gap metabolic acidosis, high osmolal gap, hypocalcemia, 
and if effective parameters are increased hygiene, decreased pH, increased serum osmolality, decreased adjusted calcium, and the cause of the high anion gap metabolic acidosis is glycolic acid, formic acid, high osmolograph is ethylene glycol, methanol, and hypercalcemia is oscillate binding calcium. That's the end of today's video about like poisoning in the lab and testing for that. So I hope you enjoyed. If there's any questions, feel free to ask me below. Thank you. Bye bye.